just quickly start you off. I'm Jen LaBarbera. I'm the Education Advocacy Manager at San Diego Pride. And I'm going to introduce to you your national anthem singer. A quick note and caveat, we do always begin our rally with the national anthem. And despite the myriad ways that our country is not living up to its promises or philosophy, we're still going to open with it. It's in the spirit of Stonewall and the spirit of our ancestors that have fought to make this country what it could be. With that, please welcome to the stage a phenomenally talented and beautiful San Diego native to sing the national anthem, Yvonne Gentile. Together, supporting each other 
because we both believe that families belong together. I share these segments of our story and our identity with all of you because we are the LGBTQ movement. We come from all walks of life and we must all support all fights for equal rights, for human rights, and for the freedom of all people to live their lives authentically and fully as themselves in their own pursuit of liberty and justice for all. At the Stonewall Riots, trans women of color, femme queens, hey, <laughs> butch dykes, and closeted New York bankers decided to fight back against the legal discrimination and violence that our community faced at the hands of our own government. No single identity owns this movement. We are all a part of it. And while the legend of Stonewall may now seem bigger than that brave spark of defiance in 1969, that riot launched this movement that is now bigger than those early rebels could have ever imagined. That is why we are here today. That is where pride comes from. And that is the message of resistance and persistence that brings us here today. But that's just how we're gonna start, so. <laughs> here to welcome you officially, officially, officially to San Diego Pride Weekend is a pioneer who paved the way for communities, our communities, political power and became the first openly LGBTQ candidate elected to San Diego City Council in 1993. And then to the Assembly, and then to the Senate, as Christine Kehoe reached those heights, she continuously reached out to lift up other elected officials and with her, this entire community. This year marks the 25th anniversary of when Christine Kehoe was first elected to city council, a seat that has remained in LGBTQ hands ever since. Please join me in welcoming your Christine Kehoe. Schumacher, openly gay council member yeah. from Carlsbad. Yeah. 
Steve Padilla, a longtime Bay member of the Chula Vista City Council. Former mayor as well. Uh, Joe Mosca from Encinitas. So we're getting folks from our county. We have staff from uh, Mayor Faulkner's office, uh, Congresswoman Susan Davis, Council Member Barbara Green, Scott Peters uh, has sent a, a, a representative, Juan Vargas, and Myrtle Cole on the City Council, President, uh, Joel Day from uh, the City of San Diego Human Rights Commission, welcome, uh, John Acosta from the Veterans uh, Commission, and Lori Zapp, City Council Woman. running a tight ship tonight. No one is going to be bored for even a single moment. I have my marching orders. I've got three minutes to uh, let you hear a little bit of my thoughts about how we build political power. I am so honored to be with you tonight, the 2018 San Diego Pride Rally. Each year, tens of thousands of us line University Avenue, LGBTQ San Diegans, our friends and our supporters to come together to celebrate, to have a whole lot of fun, but most importantly, to reaffirm the strength and unity of our community. That's what I'm here to talk to you about tonight. Because tomorrow morning, by showing that strength in such vast numbers, we're expecting 200,000 people. We are building greater political power, and that's exactly what we are going to need to fight the forces of prejudice and injustice that are running our country right now. We've got to fight it. Our civil rights that all of us have been working for decades to build are, could be rolled back in the next few years. Our right to marry, to serve in the military, to seek employment and housing, it used to happen. To order a wedding cake without fear of discrimination, they could be reversed in the next few years. We've got to change that. How do we change that? By voting. Yeah. We change that by voting. That's how I was elected 25 years ago, and some of you here in the audience or at the Vons, whatever the case may be, uh, know that and help me then. You went out and voted. I won. We had our first seat on the city council. That was a big change in San Diego in 1993. And you know what? Just like Fernando said, we've had a gay person on the city council ever since. Uh, council District, council District 3 has been has an LGBT Q plus member uh, since 1993. We think that's some kind of a record. <laughs> now we have our first queer Latina council member. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an example of what happens when we vote. So don't tell me you forgot to vote. When we build our political power, this is what happens. Yeah. Now the November elections depend on us. How many of you voted in, Jan in January, or in June, just a few weeks ago? Look at the primary, look at all those hands. You know only 40% of San Diegans that were eligible voted. We've got to change that by November. We have got to make sure your friends vote, your families vote, your roommates vote, the people you work with vote. Check the registrar voters, make sure your registration is good. If you're moved, you're not registered. If you registered your car, you may still not be registered. You have to register with the, with the registrar voter in San Diego County. And we, I look back at all we've accomplished and I'm thrilled. But I know that we have to bear in mind political action is a process. There is no finish line. It's not over. We have en enormous challenges before us. We have to go to the polls, we have to vote, and then we can impact the U.S. Congress. We can impact the White House, and we can impact the Supreme Court. Your, your vote is your voice. 
exercise it. This is no time to sit it out. Vote for your equal rights every time. Thank you and happy pride. Let's give it up one more time for Christine and all of our LGBT elected officials. I also wanted to just take a moment to thank the Hillcrest Business Association for hosting the rally today and their sponsor, the San Diego County Credit Union. It's a nicer stage than it used to be. <laughs> you know, back in 1981, San Diego Pride board member Doug Moore created the first list that became the Interpride Association, helping to connect over 1,000 prides around the world. And that commitment to international work continues to this day. That was the founding of the Interpride organization. Now, this organization, San Diego Pride, I know a lot of people think we're just a parade, we're just a party, uh, half-naked boys and go-go boots and shorts. We have that too, and they're fabulous. <laughs> but San Diego Pride partners with the Department of State and the San Diego Diplomacy Council, and through those work, we have met with over 423 delegates from 128 countries around the world in just the last four years. And through those efforts, the Department of State has sent to us 12 delegates who are LGBT leaders in their own countries. So here, represented in the audience today, are visitors from Bangladesh, Bulgaria, Chile, France, Grenada, Israel, Pakistan, Papua New Guinea, Poland, Singapore, Turkey, and Vietnam. Welcome! You can get to meet each of them personally and hear more about the work, the incredible work that they're doing in their countries this Sunday at the San Diego History Center and check out their new amazing LGBT history exhibit. It's the first of its kind, the first time our story has been told in a museum like that in our history. So let's give a round of applause to the San Diego History Center. Check them out. It is now my honor and privilege to introduce to you the co-chairs of San Diego Pride, my friends, Nick Serrano and Phyllis Jackson. Give them a warm welcome. Thank you, Fernando. San Diego! I got a question. How many of you are proud to be exactly who you are? Let me hear you right now. No, no, no. I asked you a question. How many of you are proud to be exactly who you are? Well, folks, my name is Nick Serrano. I am very proud to be the male co-chair of San Diego Pride, and I'm joined here with my fellow co-chair. Go ahead, Phyllis. His sister co-chair, <laughs> Phyllis Jackson. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. I mean, this is my first uh, rally as female co-chair, and I'm excited, I'm nervous, and we have so many people here. My sisters, my sisters, and my brothers. Welcome, San Diego Pride. First up, we'd like to introduce the winner of our Community Service Award, Leah Wexler. Leah Wexler is a genderqueer, white, femme, binational, hard of hearing, queer activist, and survivor. As, train, as training specialists with Center for Community Solutions, they bring increased focus to LGBTQIA survivors and access for people with disabilities. Liat has worked to end intimate partner abuse and sexual assault since 1999, presenting nationally on topics of social justice, intersectionality, anti-violence work, accountability, and LGBTQIA plus communities. In coalition with San Diego Pride Center for Community Solutions, 
the San Diego LGBT Community Center, North County Lifeline, and San Diego Camp, Liat co-organized at Me Too LGBTQ, a day-long conference to improve provider skills and awareness and offer rape and sexually assaulted survivors support and healing. In 2011, Liat co-founded Gender Queer San Diego, the first non-binary group in the region. Let us all join together and welcome Liat Wexler. Up next is our Stonewall Service Award, and this year the award goes to the We Care Mixer, founded by Fernando Buendia Jr. Using the connections he made through participation in the San Diego American Flag Football League, the San Diego Tennis Federation, and SD Hoops, Jr. planned the first We Care event, raising funds for low-income kids throughout San Diego. Dr. Dolores Jacobs and the staff at the San Diego LGBT Community Center helped Junior to find schools willing to accept donations from openly gay organizations. Now for the past nine years, We Care has partnered with several local LGBT sports leagues to raise nearly $50,000 and has collected over 5,500 toys for children in need. And this is based upon the core belief that the best way to receive love is to show unconditional love towards others. And that the LGBT community is strongest when great examples are set for all youth, regardless of their gender identity. Let's hear it one more time for Junior. Our next award is the Stonewall Philanthropy Award, which is going to the San Diego County Credit Union. As San Diego's largest locally owned financial institution with 8.4 billion in assets, supporting more than 75 nonprofit organizations and over 400 local events each year, San Diego County Credit Union is an engaged partner that wants to ensure everyone in the LGBTQ community feels welcome and supported throughout San Diego. For the past five years, TSDCCU adorned in teal and rainbow proudly sails the SDCCU sailboat along University and Sixth Avenues in the San Diego LGBTQ Pride Parade. Since 2014, SDCCU has proudly sponsored the San Diego LGBTQ Community Center's AIDS Walk Run, San Diego's largest fundraising event to help fight HIV and AIDS and stand up for those affected by the disease. SDCCU is a member of the Greater San Diego Business Association, GSDBA, or GSBDA, and partners with the Hillcrest Business Association to sponsor City Fest and various other events that keep Hillcrest fabulous. Congratulations, thank you, SDCCU. Next up is our Friend of Pride Award, which we're elated to give to a long-standing pillar of San Diego's LGBTQ community and one of our strongest allies, Terry Verona. Terry is the current president of P Flag San Diego County and is a board member of Bliss in San Diego. And in a conversation decades ago, she said, and I quote, if the world needs a parent for a gay child, let it be me. As P Flag San Diego County president and an advocate for youth and the LGBT community, Terry educates herself and others through her tireless work for our region's youth. Terry, representing PFLAG, partnered with San Diego Pride, the San Diego LGBT Community Center, and GLSEN to reform San Diego Unified School District's policies for LGBTQ students. For years, she has served on several boards with bold passion and visionary dedication, advancing progress for LGBTQ youth throughout San Diego. 
She is the embodiment of the word ally and a true friend of pride. Congratulations, Terry. Now I want to thank my co-chair Phyllis. Sorry. And I have uh, the tremendous honor of being able to introduce the presenter of our Community Grand Marshal Award. He is one of our L out and proud LGBT elected officials and someone that I have had the great fortune to know and to learn from for the past number of years. And a lot of people seem to think we look very much alike. <laughs> and what I don't know about all that, what I do know is that I am certainly proud that he is representing me and he is representing us in the California State Assembly. From, in, from working to ensure transgender foster youth can access healthcare services that's consistent with their gender identity, to standing up for those living with HIV to say HIV is not a crime and state law should not treat it that way. He is advocating, fighting, and persisting for us in Sacramento. You know him as our former San Diego City Council member, City Council President, and interim mayor, and now the majority whip of the California State Assembly. Please join me and welcome to the stage, California State Assembly member, Todd Gloria. Oh, Nicholas. I love that guy so much. Uh, he's an incredible member of my team. I have my wonderful Todd squad that are here, uh, but stay tuned. Nick is making this community really proud, and I think he's got nowhere to go but up. So Nick, thank you so much for that introduction. How's everyone doing? I love it, I love it. I was just asked by a reporter, what do you think of the energy of this crowd? I think the energy of this crowd tells me to always bet on our LGBTQ community. What do you say? That orange guy in Washington can do whatever he wants. He can't beat us, can he? No. Oh, I think that was equivocal. Can he beat us? No. I know he cannot. And the reason why he can't beat us is the, our next honoree, who is someone who has been in the struggle and have been in the fight for decades now. And that's precisely why we're honoring him tonight. It is an incredible honor to stand here to introduce to you Pride's Community Grand Marshal, my friend, Alberto Cortez. Alberto is a very humble man. He is a little bit shy, so this is gonna kill him, but just bear with me, because I need you to understand how exceptional he is. As the executive director of Mama's Kitchen, Alberto has overseen the growth of this incredible community organization since 2002. And since its very beginning, Mama's Kitchen, many of you were there when this happened, Mama's Kitchen has delivered over eight million meals to people living with HIV, with cancer, and other life-threatening and critical illnesses. Alberto's work within this movement, within our HIV AIDS community, stretches back almost three decades when he headed the South Bay AIDS Project at the height of our AIDS crisis. And since that time, Alberto has devoted his life, and I mean his life, uh, to this cause of supporting those and helping those with HIV and AIDS. The California State Legislative LGBT Caucus, all eight of us, senators and assembly members, led of course by our incredible Senate President Pro Tem Tony Atkins, we recently honored Alberto up in the state capitol, up in Sacramento, as a part of our LGBT Pride Month in Sacramento. And I'm pleased and so proud that we can honor him here again today as the pillar of our LGBT community that he is. So without any further ado, would you all please put your hands together for someone that's been holding it together for us for a very long time now, my friend and our community grand marshal, Alberto Cortez. love him because he didn't want to speak. Isn't that amazing? That's fine. No one ever has ever said, I wish that speech was longer. Does anyone? I've never been in that. I wish that program went on a little longer. I'm going to try and follow my own advice on that one, but you'll have to forgive me because I get to introduce 
this incredible San Diego with some frequency. It's just kind of an occupational hazard, if you will. But I can do it every single time without any notes and without any forethought because we all know her as being an incredible individual. And I know, a lot of you don't know what a Senate President Pro Tem is, now do you? Let's just be honest. Even the ones who took Latin, you're still struggling with what that is exactly. I will tell you, however, that is the single person in the state of California who leads our state Senate. 40 senators from both parties from all across the state who come together and who elected this San Diegan to lead them. She is the first woman and the first out LGBT person to lead our state Senate in our entire state's history. Think about that historic accomplishment. And then think further that she, in our state's history, is only one of three individuals who have ever led both the Assembly as Speaker and the Senate as Senate President Pro Tem. She is truly historic, but she's still, I, under, I forgive you if you understand that she's too young to really be in a history book just yet. <laughs> Lastly, I just want to say, California is the fifth largest economy in the world. We have 40 million people in this great state of ours. There are largely three people that run this state, the governor, the speaker, and the Senate president pro tem. Aren't you so happy that someone from San Diego with the morals, the values, and the priorities of a fighter like this woman is helping to lead the fifth largest economy in the world? Would you please stand up and put your hands together for our Senate president pro tem? who understood what she needed to do to empower not only 
her community, but herself first in order to empower her community. And that's critical. You know, I am really honored. I got to talk to her on the phone a few weeks ago, and I said, well, what is it you really, really would like people to understand about the work that you do? And she says, this community is so important to her but it, because it brought all the pieces of her life together. And that's what it's done for so many of us. She also said that there needs to be, and you know it's true, more African-American women sitting at the table. And I'm going to add, those women need to be setting the agenda. So on behalf of a grateful community, Nisha, we want to congratulate you. Thank you for your community service, and congratulations on being a champion of pride. One more time for Tony Atkins and all of our awardees. So our next award, uh, our next speaker is near and dear to my heart, a close colleague of mine, gender queer, white, femme, binational, hard of hearing, queer activist, and a fellow survivor. You've already heard a lot about them, and it's been my pleasure to work with them. Please welcome back to the stage, Liat Wexler. So before I begin, I um, want to let people know that I'll be talking about sexual assault, and I encourage you to practice self-care. I am a survivor of sexual assault. I was raped when I was eight years old, repeatedly, and then later. I was assigned female at birth, um, and so I really understood those experiences in the context of violence against women, um, and that's really what helped me to heal and begin my process of activism. A nice side effect of transitioning in my 30s was that I was no longer afraid to walk down the street alone, and then I was raped again. This time, I was sexually assaulted by a woman at Red Wing and she thought it was a hilarious joke. When I confronted it, um, she denied it, and she said, why would I grab a man, I'm a lesbian. I really felt violated and betrayed by a member of my own community, and I reported it to the uh, staff member, the bouncer, and he laughed in my face. I could have reported it to the police, I had every right, um, but seriously, I didn't think that they would take any note of it. And to be honest, police have never really supported trans people historically or to this day. In this Me Too era, we have focused a lot on women telling their truth and we need to believe women and we need to end the sexism and the violence against women. And at the same time, we need to also listen to the victims who are not women, non-binary people, and men who are gay, bi, queer, and transgender. <laughs> Sexual assault is not just about sexism, it's about power and control. It's about someone touching another person without their permission. In our fight for sexual liberation, we tend to deny that sexual assault also happens here. I've seen gay men grope women and say, it's not a big deal because I'm not attracted to women. Or tell me that gay men can't be raped because gay men always want sex. And I've heard women, lesbians, say that it can't happen to them because women don't sexually abuse. Yet studies show that we experience sexual assault at astronomically high rates, higher than straight and cisgender people, and fewer of us report it or seek help for the trauma. We can change this story for our communities by believing survivors, by improving systemic responses by police and prosecution, and by creating culturally humble resources. 
and I deeply believe that we can end sexual assault. It means making consent a norm. Yeah. In everything we do. It means getting real about race and gender and ability and how they intersect. And it means centering youth, people with disabilities, queer folks, bi folks, uh, people of color, and trans femmes in all of the work that we do. Tarana Burke, founder of Me Too, said, it's a movement about love and respect and cultivating those things to combat trauma. So here are three things that you can do to end sexual assault. The first, you can join the GBTQ task force that works to increase culturally humble resources for survivors. We meet monthly at the Pride office and you can get resources and support for yourself or for survivors in your life at Center for Community Solutions. The second thing, and this is hard, notice the ways that you, like all of us, support rape culture without meaning to, by victim blaming and slut shaming. And the third, be an active bystander. And that means interrupting rape jokes, harmful language, and any non-consensual touching that you see. Point it out. Point it out and share why it makes all of us unsafe. So I challenge you today, you're here, you're present, and I challenge you to bring that presence back into your lives and to work with me to end sexual violence. Thank you. As a fellow survivor, I know that it is not easy to talk about sexual assault, let alone on a microphone, but Liat is my hero, my mentor, my idol, and my fashion icon. So let's give it up one more time for Liat Wexler. Our next speaker, is a powerful queer woman of color who also happens to be the spouse of the champion of pride, so we're talking power couple, which is great. Shakina Gallardo is a powerhouse in her own right, having spent years uplifting and investing in LGBTQ and marginalized youth of color. Please join me in welcoming Shakina Gallardo. Especially for transgender. 
especially for the transgender youth of color. We cannot lose another youth. We cannot. We have to make sure not only are our voices strong enough, but we have to help them use their own. Silence is a weapon of mass destruction. We cannot allow them to stay silent anymore. They all have a story that needs to be heard. And we, as the ones who have come before them, we know what that journey is like. When I came out to my mother, my girlfriend wasn't allowed on her porch. That's what she said. But I kept having those conversations. I did not stay silent. I used my voice and eventually she accepted me with open arms. But not everyone has that story. Not everyone is that lucky. So the youth, we have to invest in them. We have to allow them a space to breathe, a space to grow. And for those who have come before them, it is our duty to help them use that voice. It is our duty to help them find that space of hope. So again, if you are between the ages of 10 and 24, please stand up again. Please know that you are loved, you are special, and you are our future. We love you. Please take care. Thank you. Let's give it up one more time for Shakina. What do we want? Equal rights. Chant with me. What do we want? Equal rights. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Equal rights. When do we want it? Now. All right. All across the country, the Victory Fund works for those equal rights by attempting to assist our community in finding our seat at the table. And today, we were attempting to bring a pioneer to our stage. But unfortunately, she's stuck in a plane, but I'm still going to do the intro. <laughs> From the streets of Greenwich Village, to the cover of Time Magazine, to elected offices all over this country, our trans siblings have been at the forefront of this fight. In 2017, Danica Rome made history by becoming the first openly transgender person elected to state office, beating out one of the most vitriolic anti-LGBT locker ma makers in this country. Despite ongoing transphobic personal attacks, Danica had the grace and the persistence to not only win her election, she set the standard for how you combat hate and discrimination without sinking to their level. Here to say a few words on Danica's behalf is your Senator, President Pro Tem, Tony Atkins. Virginia, and I, I came to San Diego in 1985, started to work uh, on Chris Kehoe's uh, historic campaign with so many of you I see in the crowd. And you know what I thought about back then? San Diego is an incredible community. You've seen the result of what you've done, the support of Victory to get qualified LGBTQ elected to office. And you know the difference it makes in our community, you know the difference it makes in our state, and you know the difference it makes in our country. Back then I thought to myself, it's a good thing I left my native Virginia to move to California, because I would have never been elected in Virginia as an LGBT person. And look at today. I couldn't have been prouder on election night Although there were some not so good things happening elsewhere in the state of Virginia, my heart, and I see a fellow Virginian down here, my heart just was overwhelmed to see Danica Rome get elected to the House of Delegates from Manassas, Virginia. The first transgender person elected in a state house and then followed along by a number of others. She will be a Grand Marshal tomorrow in our parade in San Diego. And I know that you will give her an incredible San Diego welcome as she goes through the streets of Hillcrest. You know, but I want to tell you real quick and then I'm done what made that happen. 
It was an individual with a pure heart who wanted to serve. And she knew her community, not just her LGBTQ community, she knew her community. She knew that their issues were traffic. I know, don't let your eyes glaze over. I won't give you a lesson in traffic calming, I promise you. But she understood that public safety and traffic and infrastructure and affordable housing and yes, equal rights for all people. And she went door to door to door. And she talked face to face with every constituent she could find. It reminds me so much of the election of Chris Kehoe in 1993, when you are the first to make it happen. But guess what? I know what Danica would say, and I know what Chris Kehoe has said, and I know what every one of my colleagues on the stage tonight will say, and that is not one of us could have done it without the support of an incredible community. And that's each and every one of you here tonight. You made San Diego make it on the map of one of the most progressive cities in terms of electing out LGBTQ plus people. You did that. And I couldn't be prouder to say that because of the work we do here in San Diego, it resonates. You know that it does. So when Chris Kehoe talks about every vote making a difference, you know that it does. And so I will leave you with this. We've recognized so many champions of pride tonight. I want to put it back at you. Each and every one of you make this successful. You make it happen. You make us all prideful. So tomorrow when we march and we feel the emotion and the passion and the pride and the energy, you know that's who we are. That's what we're about. And that's what we've come to do. I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to tell you. I started off this week, last week, last Saturday, at SheFest. How many of you got to go to SheFest? It was incredible. And then today I got to march a little bit along the route with Trans Pride. How many of you marched with Trans Pride today? Bigger every single year. I hope you'll support each and every part of our community in our celebration of ourselves and of pride. Thank you all. Happy Pride. Let's give it up for Tony Atkins. In closing, joining us on the stage now are graduates from the San Diego LGBT Community Center's Young Professionals Academy, graduates from San Diego Pride's Youth Leadership Academy, Pride's Youth Ambassadors, and our youngest leaders are transgender youth representing transforming families and trans family support services. Although I don't know where my YPC and youth kids are. They're coming up apparently. <laughs> This man who's standing right here, my father, didn't stand on this stage tonight just overnight. It wasn't all sunshine and rainbows and smiles. It took two decades of tears, anger, hurt feelings, and fighting. But here's the thing. Sometimes fighting means forgiveness. It means looking past the learned prejudices and mistakes of the people who came before us and focusing on their creative altruism and cultivating from them their compassionate wisdom to build a better tomorrow in the continuum, the relay race of this movement. While police brutality, legal discrimination, oppression and violence towards our community forced us to rise up against our own government, we ignited a movement that gave us pride. And so too, HIV swept out our feet and forced so many and too many men to take a knee. And while that moment in our history forced our community's strength to show its hand, it also denied us 
generations of queer brilliance and mentorship to lead the next generation. Decades of being called predators and perverts and pedophiles denied us dignity and the ability to build a healthy community. Now it is not only us who are taking a knee against police brutality. And while the oppression of our most vulnerable might look like a closet or a literal cage, it is imperative that as we rise, we all rise together. As the attacks keep coming day after day after day, we must work to lift and heal one another, and that is how we will persist with pride. First, I would like to thank Fernando, everyone here today, and those who have been fighting for LGBTQ rights before I do both. When I came out to the public with my story five years ago, I only understood my own experience. I didn't fully understand the terrible things that were happening to other LGBTQ people around the world. As I've grown older and begun to understand more, it's made me feel overwhelmed and now I just want to help others. I've met other trans kids who were kicked out of their church, forced, forced to use the wrong restroom, and haven't had many supportive friends. It made me feel sad and both very lucky. I'm thrilled to live in California, where I've lost to protect me, and leaders like those who have spoken here today, such as to Senator Tony Atkins, Assemblyman Todd Gloria, and former Senator Christine Keough, who are willing to fight for me in the LGBTQ community. It is because of people like them and all of you out there that I am able to live more openly and freely. Even now, I still still haven't told many friends at my school that I am trans because I feel afraid and, that they, and they might treat me differently if they found out. I think it shouldn't be ha have to be this way. Being trans is just a small part of who I am and I shouldn't have to worry if my friends find out or if they'll still accept me. I wish these leaders and my parents didn't have to keep fighting for my equality. We need to keep mo moving forward. We need to keep teaching the world that it would be lame if we were all the same, and that's why different <laughs> is okay. And thank you for Thank you for allowing me to share my story today, and thank you for giving us another amazing pride to celebrate who we all are. I'm Ryland, I am trans, I am proud, and I will persist with pride. It wasn't always like this. We weren't always able to empower our youth. But I think you can see Times are changing. Here to close us off tonight is the San Diego Pride Youth Marching Band led by Russ Sperling. Please your attention as our LGBT City Council members Christopher Ward and Georgia Gomez raise the San Diego Pride flag.
Thank you all so much for coming out to the Spirit of Stonewall rally. Say the block party is free this year. Let's give it up to the HBA. If you want to keep it free, make donations. There's little bottles around the side, so please make a donation to help keep this event free. And throughout this weekend, celebrate, persist with pride, love each other, because baby, you were born this way.